Hey, this is Stacia, and we are going to play a training game on chess.com in line with my training plan, um, which ChatGPT helped me make. I thought it would be fun. I'll show it to you guys, because why not? Hopefully, there's nothing embarrassing on here. Um, but I worked with ChatGPT to make this, like, one hour of training a day thing, because I have certain things I have to do to prepare lessons for my strong students and I will play my own training games and stuff like that. But I wanted to be more structured about specific things and ChatGPT and I came up with this. So um, it's Saturday and that means it's training game day. And so I'm definitely going to do this. If I had camp all week and trust me, training does not go well during camp. <laughs> so I skipped it. But I feel revived and back in action. I'm well rested. So I'm hoping to play two or three training games. And I'm really going to bring my A game um, in two days to Parma Chess Club and try to get my rating back up. It slipped a bit. Um, but I've kind of learned that I shouldn't play when I'm tired or not in the mood. I don't think it just generally I don't get good results. And uh, I don't enjoy it as much either. So why do I do that? So I'm going to um, really bring my best when I play tournaments for a while. And let's see how that goes. Ooh, we're playing the Mighty Magician. They're 1987. Oh my gosh, are we going to get a Mora? I hope so. You Would you like my pawn? Oh, they declined it. What's wrong with you? It's a free pawn. Everybody knows it's a free pawn. Okay, so... We're in a decline line, but I'm actually pretty comfortable with this. I even learned a new game in this line because I prepared it for my students. Um, so let me get my bearings here. Yeah, knight c6 is a move. It's kind of flexible. Probably bishop c4 is my answer. And on knight b6, okay, they chose e6, I think it's a good move. So now I should probably castle or take on d4. If I take here and try to give them double pawns, I don't think that's going to work out. They take, I take, wait, does that work out? I mean, I'm taking a knight. They kind of got to take back, right? Then I can take here. They can throw in a check. This is true. They're going to check. Here, takes, queen takes. I'm still protecting. But then maybe they just go here and challenge my, my e-pawn. I think that's the problem with it. Then I take, take. They have an isolated pawn there, though. But their bishops are open. So they don't have to check and everything. I think after takes, takes, and pawn takes, maybe they just play d6 immediately, attacking my pawn. Then if I take back, they can take bishop d6. And actually, we just both have isolated pawns there. Yeah, we just both have isolated pawns. That's kind of what my feeling was, because I've seen lines like this before. But I wanted to make sure. So I'm not going, going to play that way. Um, definitely not taking the knight. This is a good bishop. I don't want to do that. So, um, but what I think I will do is take on d4. I think that's the move I want to play. I just want to free up the square for the knight. That's my main thing. It also solidifies the center. And now on um, d6, I may play like queen e2 is what I'm thinking. So can I play queen e2 here? So it's protected. It'll protect that again, too. 
on knight a5. I have some options. So let's say they take, I would take, we have an open d file. I will quickly cast and put a rook on d1. So I like queen e2. This is the normal move, I'm pretty sure. They're playing super fast. But what else is new? My opponents always do this. And I sit here cal and calculate like it's a slow time control game for some reason. Okay, now I would think this is with tempo, but they could take back with a queen and I'm not saying the queen is like well placed there, but she's not horribly placed. I'm giving up my pawn on e5. I'd rather keep my pawn on e5. So I want to invite this capture. So I do think I'll simply castle here. Do they have any forcing moves or anything? There's knight a5, but it's not that. It's nothing. Yeah, just castle and take, take. I'm still holding on to that. So they make castle as well. Okay, they do. So rook d1 comes to mind now, or knight c3. Knight c3 will, or it could result in either an isolated c pawn or an isolated queen pawn. So maybe I don't want to do that right away, but on the other hand, if I get the isolated queen pawn, I want my rook on e1, I think. And I don't want to play bishop e3. I don't like that, really. I could play a3. a3 might actually be a move. Because right now, black has a lot of pressure on b4. And they could play a knight to b4 at any moment. Can't say I'm afraid of it though. So maybe knight c3 is the right move. Let's just say on knight c3, they take here, I take back. They take here, I take back. I don't love that, you know? So after knight c3, if they take and I take and then they take here, I don't know. I don't think knight c3 is good. Having trouble finding a move though, a different move. Rook d1, I guess, is a thing. We could do rook d1. Then if they take, I will take with a pawn. I still can't go knight c3 without. Oh, I actually can because her queen's pinned. Okay. What about rookie one? Is rookie one a better way to go? Rookie one that I might actually take there. So rookie one they take. I take. Okay. Okay, Rook D1. I just had to make a decision, and honestly, these are the kind of decisions that I regret spending time on later. <laughs> so, in fact, I spent way too much time in the opening. But okay, so they just simply get out of out of the way there. Makes some sense to me. I could give them an isolated pawn too. I could s take here now. Take, take, and take. Applies pressure on h6, though. They have two bishops. Their bishops are open. Eh. We don't want to do that, I don't think. 
suspicious protected. So let's say knight c3 they take. I take, they take. Hmm. I'm just going to play knight c3. I, I kind of like that it's, yeah, it's kind of forcing and, okay. I think they're just going to take on e5 now. I don't think having this pawn is the end of the world for us. I don't think it is. I think I'll just take with a pawn. Okay. I've got to calculate faster. Not as deeply. <laughs> okay, they want to go bishop b7. They're just playing normal moves. They're not putting any pressure on me at all. They're just saying that I have a weak c pawn. Bishop f4 is a move. Just overprotect our pawn. But so is bishop d3. I also kind of like. Bishop d3, bishop e7, queen d3, g6. I want to play bishop h6 there, but I'm not sure I can. But I can always just move my queen. Because unfortunately that bishop is protected. Otherwise I'd be pinning the knight. That would be pretty good. And then they're going to try to win that. And I don't even think I care if they do, which is maybe not correct. but I don't want to spend too much time. Okay, so I could play something like queen g4 here, I thought. And then I will play bishop h6. They can move their knight. Oh, they can win e5, huh? If queen g5, take, take, and take. Should be a rook over. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's good. Maybe Queen F four. I know I don't have bishop h6, but I was thinking the queen could go here and continue protecting that pawn. And then we have bishop h6 and like h4, h5 and stuff like that. Okay, so now the knight, or now the rook is loose, so. Okay, 
it's probably time to move the bishop. I don't really want to go bishop e3, but... Maybe I can play bishop b2. It seems wrong to me, though. It seems very wrong. I, th I feel like we need this bishop over here for these dark squares. All right, I have to start following my intuition. If they trade dark square bishops, I'll be happy because the knight and queen can more easily get in. So that was the idea there. I want to play queen g3, h4, h5. What does black want, though? I've been asking that enough. I think they just want to trade pieces and try to win c3. My rook's ready to come and at least make that annoying because their queen's in front over there. Okay, so here's their, their rook. Attacking this again. So I actually am wondering about c4. Because if they take this way, we're going to win the exchange. But this might be a good move. We want to push this pawn anyway. Queen protects it. If they take with a knight. We take their rook. Ugh, I only have four minutes. Okay, but I think maybe rook d5 was, was not right, unless I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. Yeah, I'm regretting using so much time in the opening. I like my position. I think the position's fine. Maybe even good. But <laughs> being nine minutes behind the clock is not exactly good for uh, winning games. So I'm going to try to enter into blitz mode now. Wow, they actually played that. Okay, their king is looking awfully. Shaky, knight g5, what do they do? Bishop f8, I guess. Knight g5, bishop f8. Queen f6, bishop g7, queen h4, h5, I think I'll win e5 if I do this, is it worth it? There takes, takes, takes. Queen f6. They might have knight takes e5 right now, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
There's knight g4. Knight g4 is annoying. Yep, I have to go, um... Actually... Yeah, I think queen h4. Oh, man. They're gonna just take my bishop. I think I messed this up. I'm just trying to play too fast in the critical moment. This is unfortunately what I do often. But I'm not gonna give up just yet. Let's keep trying. Okay, yeah, they got that. Seems very bad now to me. It's yeah, it's extremely bad actually. It's extremely bad. I have to trade queens and I really don't want to. But they're they're killing me here. Ninety one percent, seventy six that game. Hmm. Feel like I just got nothing here. <laughs> Take, 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 queen check here. With the bishop gone, this isn't as dangerous. I think maybe it's my best chance. Actually, I could take, though, they do this first here. I think it's okay. see anything for them like check here and then what oh kind of missed that one so I go here they check and now the rook gets in okay this is bad this is bad I have this guarded. What am I talking about? <laughs> I've got it guarded. Okay, now I just blundered, I think. Because now they have check. And if here... No, I'm still fine. Never mind. <laughs> I'm still okay. Nope, I take it back. There's queen f2. But if I go here, there's rook d8, king c7, check. Oh, this is rough. If I go here, there's also this check. I don't like that. All right, well, yep, I know. Can't go there. Can't go there either. So I got nothing. I think they just do this. I can't block. I 
but I'm going to lose a rook. So <laughs> losing a rook's not good. I don't quite see a perpetual either. Maybe they go queen check. Yeah, they did that one. All right. Let's see, check there, check. They can run there. Check, check, check. I don't know, maybe. Oh, actually, no, they take a check. So, this is not good. Oh, man, I got nowhere to go. All right. Let's just tell them good game. Well played. That was, uh, that was, that was typical Stacia. I, um, I don't know why I played so slow early on, but I was trying to play well, you know. But I really got to remember that in these rapid games, I think I should save that energy for later in the game because I feel like the middle game is where I needed more time uh, to figure out the right ways forward. Um, if we just go through the game without the engine, I'll give my thoughts. This is how you should analyze a game. So let's do it the right way. You should at least make some conclusions on your play yourself before you look with the engine. So why did I lose this game? It was definitely gross time management, like disgusting time management. <laughs> I was fine. I started using time here because I do have a history of not understanding these positions very well. But honestly, I did play the moves that I would play in Blitz in like one second. So I didn't, so my time didn't amount to anything, my time usage. I would have played all these moves in one second, including Rook D1, which I spent a huge amount of time on because I just couldn't decide, is my Rook better here? Is my Rook better here? I mean, this is classical time control type thinking in my you know like I think in a rapid game you just don't have time for that kind of stuff you know the rook's good on one of these squares and it's not going to be too big of a, a difference which one um so I should have played this fast it definitely shouldn't have been three minutes so I'm back to my old tricks but that's why I'm going to play two more training games tonight and I'm going to focus on time Actually, I'm going to add time management into my um, training plan because that should affect my results big time. Okay, so in terms of the chess, though, I was hesitant to play knight c3, but I was starting to worry about time already. And I didn't see, like, another move to play here. Um, so I went knight c3, allowing them to give me this isolated c pawn. But in return for that C-pawn, I've got the attacking E-pawn. And my bishop can come to the Greek diagonal. <laughs> and there's a lot of attacking moves to be played. Um, so I felt like the pressure might be real. Then again, I do feel like it just feels a little slow. So I would not be surprised if white is like already like on the worst side of equality or like maybe even slightly worse here. It's kind of my, my opinion, like maybe like minus 0.2 or something like that. The attack feels a little bit weaker than usual to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just didn't find the right moves. So let's see, they went B6, okay. So here's where I need to take action rather quickly. I played Bishop D3, so maybe this isn't right. Maybe this isn't right. I don't know. I do like it. 
Maybe I should go bishop b3. So my rook is blocked now. So basically black's going to argue that they developed, they're fine, the rooks are coming in next, and they're going to just target my pawn and win easily. And that's kind of what happened, right? They have two weaknesses to target. So maybe I was just worse. Maybe knight c3 was actually a bad move. So I provoked this weakness. Then I realized they're going to win my e-pawn. So this is a problem. So yeah, you know what? The rook ended up on, it did need to be on e1. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so rook, rook d1 was wrong. They, did, they just easily moved their queen off the d-file. And this pawn became a problem. The d-file did not matter at all for me. I mean, I'm just going to trade pieces down the d-file. What really would have mattered is the rook protecting the pawn and maybe coming to e3 and helping with the attack. So that, yeah, I would have known that, I think. No, maybe not. I don't know. I did think a while on that move, and I did not figure that out. But I wasn't certain we would have this pawn structure. Just why I was calculating. So c4, I don't know about this. I was actually wondering if they could play this move. Um, oops. But I really don't think so. I just take the rook, right? This is this is nothing. Yeah, this can't be this can't be anything. We just we just want material. Like a lot of material. So I think this move is right. And I was skeptical of rook a5, but the rook continues to exert pressure here and now my rook sort of tied down to the a pawn as well so actually i think that move actually in hindsight was pretty decent and i just didn't like my position anymore <laughs> i went knight g5 but i actually think that's not the right move at all um what is the right move maybe queen h6 but i mean i'm just gonna lose e5 like my rook my rook just needs to be on e1 so I think it's already too late, but especially here it was because knight g4, yeah, I was blitzing now and I, I missed how strong knight g4 was. I saw it, but then I realized how strong it is like around here because I lose that dark square bishop and then also like there's tremendous pressure. I'm the one being attacked. It's really just me now. And it's kind of over. This is game over. So I think my opponent played well. And they played extremely fast, too. Um, which is disturbing to me. So let's see what we can learn. Yeah, they played with 91.5% accuracy. But I've kind of learned that opponents that play that well in these defending positions... It's usually because I failed to find moves that test them, right? Like I make moves that just let them do exactly what they want and, and they know what to, they know what they want in one second. And honestly, I would too if I was them. I'd be like, oh, that's fine. I'll just play my move. You know, I, so I do understand that they weren't cheating or anything like that. They were just playing their normal moves and I failed to um, find the right way forward this game. So let's, let's see. Um, looks like they did miss something, but let's just go through it. Okay, so rook d1 is a book move, but I have to tell you that I'm very skeptical of it now. I, I think I should have put the rook on e1. Wow, computer disagrees. So if rook on e1, knight a5 is good. I don't know. I, I wasn't too afraid of this, but I guess... I was just going to go bishop d3, which I see as a move. We could also take first. Because then if they take this way, we get to take here, and that's a tempo. So that's winning. Um, so they would have to just take back. You know, I was thinking queen takes. 
Okay, and then we can go bishop d3 if we want to. But, okay, um... Oh yeah, I was thinking rook e1, knight a5. Okay, they really want to... So now their queen can live on d6 and exert pressure here. And this is an IQP position. Um, I would definitely think of knight c3. Is that bad for some reason? Why is knight c3 bad? Oh, it's black's turn. Sorry. <laughs> black can play knight b4. Yeah, they can now. Okay, I kind of see their point now. Like, it's hard for me to keep this, this bishop now. I guess, yeah, bishop e4. But now the bishop's kind of in the way of the other things I want to do. Um, ooh, and they can even play f5, which now I'm just going to lose my bishop. It's going to get traded off, I mean. And I don't like this position as much without it, because if I have that bishop, it, it can exert pressure here now on this weak pawn. Without it, it's going to be harder for me to play actively. So computer still thinks it's fine, but it's more positional now, for sure. They have this weakness, we have this weakness, and we just play chess. But this knight's weird. Okay. All right, but in the game, rook d1, queen c7, and knight c3 was a mistake. It's dubious. And I think it's because of the pawn structure that I get. At first, I did not want to allow it, and then I talked myself into it. But yeah, I should not have allowed this. I think this is wrong. It's the reason that we don't even have an edge anymore. Like, it's equal if I play awesome. <laughs> so I went b6, bishop d3. Okay, and now queen d3 is dubious as well. I had to go h4, which I considered. h4 okay let's see how the computer will play it h4 they would bring their rook over let's play the same way black played in the game computer says bishop f4 okay yeah so the computer is saying e5 is weak i'm going to protect it it's leaving c3 though so yeah, like computer gives knight a5, I would think that's a move. But then knight g5, okay. If they take, we get to take with tempo on the rook. If f6, I'm sure we take that. And the attack becomes real, right? Mm-hmm. Bishop h6, yep, rook f7, and now what, queen g4, no, computer gives bishop b5, wow, bishop b5, <laughs> what, I have no clue what that even is, I understand that it's attacking the rook, maybe the point is we win the file, and control d7. That could be the point. It says this is completely winning now because of back rank issues, I think. Okay. Okay, well, I don't want to dwell on that forever, but I think my move is wrong because <laughs> g6 is a great move. What? It's the most obvious move ever. But I think I'm trying to provoke a weakness. That's what I'm doing here, but it just turns out that it's very hard to defend my pawn. I probably have to play um, bishop f4. And now here's the problem with queen d3, because after bishop f4, he's got these discoveries. Yeah, and sure enough, knight b4 is the move the engine wants. But I was also thinking they could possibly do... 
something. Oh, I was thinking they could do this. They cannot, I don't think. Because I take with the queen. Um, but I didn't... I saw this from afar, so I didn't really... I, I needed to consider it here. And I didn't. I only played this move. So now, yeah, black's better, which is what I felt. So the bishop needed to go to f4 to overprotect that pawn. These are all themes I know, and I just didn't come up with them in the game. And then knight g5 is a blunder, yeah. It felt like a blunder, and I understand why it's a blunder. I mean, once you lose e5, it's like, it's not going to be a good game. I mean, I'm surprised computer says minus 0.2. I thought it'd be like minus 2 here. So what was I supposed to do? Queen g3, which is what I had planned. Oh, man. I, I just missed that this is pinned. I missed that. That that does give us some hope. So they go rook c8 to protect the queen. Now they're not pinned. And then c5 or bishop f4? Yeah, I would go bishop f4. <laughs> Oh, the bishop f4. Now they can win that pawn if they want to. Oh, they can't. The knight's pinned. Okay, so there was some play there too, but I had no time. I was blitzing now. So in the moments where I needed time, I didn't have any. In the moments where I didn't need time, I pontificated. <laughs> Let's see, queen, queen h4. Mistake. <laughs> what should I do? Queen f4. Yeah, I mean, that's lost, though. I, I can't trade queens here. Computer says you can, but... I don't know. This looks miserable to me. I guess we have two bishops, and the rook's weird. Is that what we have? <laughs> I guess so. All right, well, so I'm not recognizing defensive resources good enough. So I misevaluated that that was completely lost. I thought it was, but it's actually playable. I mean, you're worse, but <laughs> it's more playable than what I did, which is lose immediately. <laughs> so e4. Yeah, and you know, I knew this is dangerous. I calculated a little bit, but it was not right because this was just killer. Forget what I missed, but I think I've seen enough. <laughs> I don't want to um, see any more of this game. So let's just quickly go over what moves were wrong. So we've got three mistakes and a blunder. The blunder was knight g5, a critical moment where I just went wrong. I could have played a little bit better, I think, had I just held on to this pawn. I think that's what I have to do here. And, hmm, what was the move I should play? Not exactly sure. So instead of knight g5, what should I have done? Bishop e4 is the move. c5 is also a move. Bishop e2 is a move. So we want to open up the rook, I guess, is one thing. Another thing is we want to trade bishops, I guess. Yeah, and that, that actually makes sense because these light squares are all locked up now. So this bishop is not going to help with, with the attack, really. I run into this a lot. I like to keep the bishop on um, this diagonal if they have knife f5, <laughs> and then I take it. That happens in the mora all the time, and I think that's a fair way to play. I think something similar is happening here where our bishop just isn't so useful, and we actually want to trade it for that bishop on b7, which is actually quite strong, aimed right at the queen side. So I think that's the idea there. And um, 
Okay, but let's see the mistakes. This was a mistake. Okay, they're all late in the game, I guess. But my dubious moves, oops. Usually I can click this and get the mistakes. Okay, queen f6 mistake, where's the other one? It's not showing me. Like, am I crazy? I don't see, <laughs> I don't see the other mistakes or the anything here. So knight c3 dubious, queen e4 dubious. Huh, okay. So I think I did learn from this game, um, but I'm gonna get ready for another one and I'm going to play more like a blitz game next time and let's see what happens. So stay tuned for more chess. Okay, bye.